Hello and welcome to Portfolio Matters, new improved 10-minute investment outlook for June. So following some discussion on the Discord channel, I have decided to change the format of the 10-minute investment outlook monthly, and it will no longer be aimed at people who are new to investing. It will be aimed at our actual audience, and it will provide a brief summary of what I think the macro economic environment is. And it was very much to be viewed in conjunction with the weekly. So the weekly will provide a lot of detail week by week on changes and what's happening in the world economy. The monthly 10 minute summary will step back and take an overview. Before I get going, a quick disclaimer. Nothing contained in this podcast constitutes investment advice. Please do your own research. Full disclaimer can be found at the end. Okay, one line summary. Continue to be very cautious. The safest asset to hold is cash. But with inflation being very high in the UK, you want to hold as much of that cash as you can in an inflation-protected bond. So short-dated index link gilts provide that protection and seem the best way of protecting your cash against inflation without taking much risk. It's too late to buy equities. It's too early to buy bonds. Okay, starting with the US. Well, the outlook in the US is highly uncertain. The Fed has paused interest rate rises with rates at between 5 and 5.25%, but they have reiterated the need for further rate rises by year end. CPI inflation is falling, core CPI remains elevated, and the Fed wants to get core CPI down. All the leading economic indicators are very negative. The yield curve continues to strongly forecast a recession later this year and credit growth is slowing and the credit impulse is strongly negative. All of that suggests that the US economy should be heading towards a recession. However, actual economic conditions in the US remain strong. The U.S. economy remains resilient. The labor market is tight. The construction sector, which normally leads the economy into a recession, is doing very well thanks to the building of new factories as, as a result of the CHIPS and IRA acts. So the fiscal deficit via those two programs is supporting construction and the U.S. economy. And U.S. consumers still have excess savings from the pandemic. So although leading indicators continue to predict that the U.S. economy will slow, actually it's doing just fine at the moment. And fiscal largesse means that the U.S. economy could escape with a soft landing. But the yield curve, which is a very accurate forecast of coming recessions, is giving a strong signal. If you buy equities in the belief that the U.S. economy will grow over the coming year, then you have to believe that this time is different. Now, this hiking cycle has been very fast and interest rates act with long and variable lags. And the full impacts of those rises in interest rates are yet to be felt by the U.S. economy. This is U.S. inflation, which is coming down nicely. Core CPI is not. And the Fed is committed to raising rates further to bring that back towards its 2% target. And this is the US fiscal deficit. And you'll see that it's been increasing sharply, despite the fact the US is not in recession. So the Biden administration is running a pro-cyclical fiscal policy. And as a result of that fiscal largesse, construction spending in the manufacturing sector has surged, particularly in the semiconductor industry, and that is supporting the construction industry. But leading indicators continue to forecast a coming recession. So 
The outlook in the US is very uncertain. In the UK, today, the Bank of England raised rates by 50 basis points to 5% because the UK economy has been resilient and the labour market tight, which means inflation has been very persistent. Although CPI has come down a bit, core CPI continues to rise and the figure from May was 7.1%, which was a new high. The Bank of England needs to continue raising rates to slow the economy and create some slack in the labour market, and that means a recession. And the UK here is the blue line, and you'll see that everyone else's inflation is falling quickly. Ours is not. And the market is now expecting the UK interest rates to hit 6% by January next year. And the fundamental problem for the UK is that Inflation is being caused by tight labor markets. Pause, take a look. This chart shows the percentage of companies which are struggling to find workers. And the higher the proportion of companies struggling to find workers, the higher wage inflation. So in order to get inflation down, the Bank of England needs to create some slack in the labor market. That means recession. Okay, on to the EU. Well, the EU is already in a technical recession, having had two quarters of minus 0.1% negative growth. But the ECB is continuing to raise rates, and Christine Lagarde has committed to raising them further in the coming months. So it is likely that the Eurozone will fall further into recession. Despite that, the EU unemployment rate is actually at its lows. So the labor markets in the EU are tight. So these are EU interest rates. This is EU GDP. We had two negative quarters, so we're in a technical recession. And EU leading indicators continue to fall, and it is the fall in this chart which indicates a recession. So this chart shows that the EU economy is expected to continue weakening. And Nordea are forecasting a deep EU recession in the coming year. Moving on to China. Well, China, the Chinese economy has recovered from its COVID lockdowns, but growth is not as strong as had been forecast. The Chinese economy depends heavily on residential construction, and that in turn is a function of housing speculation. Most apartments in China are bought as an investment rather than to live in. And so falling prices mean that there's no incentive to buy new property. And so a big driver of the Chinese economy over the past decades is simply missing. So Chinese economy is, is growing, but more slowly than expected. And that is likely to continue. Everywhere, Yield curves are signaling a coming recession. So how does the macroeconomic backdrop impact the outlook for asset classes? Well, one of the puzzles this year has been that equities have held up well in the face of rising interest rates. But if the economy is slow, then earnings will fall and share prices are likely to fall with them. Currently, equities have a very poor risk-reward profile, and I remain negative on them. The only stock market to do well is the US, and that has been entirely due to technology stocks. But with NVIDIA now trading on a P ratio of 200, I question how much further that can go. Energy commodities are very difficult to forecast because supply is tight, but demand is slowing. So we have two strong opposing forces. Industrial commodities, the Chinese recovery is stalling and Western economies are forecast to go into recession. So they are unlikely to produce decent returns. Bonds should do well in a falling interest rate environment but we are not there yet. Interest rates have yet to peak. Gold is a good long-term diversifier, particularly in a world where 
global debt levels continue to rise and there is the threat of monetary debasement. So small diversifying holding in gold would always seem to be a good idea. But cash, particularly inflation protected cash, would seem the safest place to be at the moment. And I personally have a lot of my money in TR24, which which is the UK inflation protected gilt maturing on the 22nd of March 2024. And I estimate that over the coming nine months that it will produce a return of about 6.8% based on what we know of RPI. OK, that's it. Please, can you provide some feedback on changes to the monthly and press like and subscribe to the channel. And it's goodbye for me, Keith Jordan. Goodbye. Full disclaimer, the material and information contained in this podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon for making a business, legal or any other decision. We may own or have a financial interest in any securities mentioned. Listeners should conduct their own research or consult a professional investment advisor before making any decisions regarding topics mentioned on the show. Whilst we endeavour to ensure that the information presented on the show is correct, we make no representations or warranties of any kind, expressed or implied, with respect to the podcast and website or to any information, products, services or related graphics discussed or presented in the podcast or website. Any reliance you place on such material is strictly at your own risk. You are solely responsible for the investment decisions you make. We will not be responsible for any errors or omissions in the podcast or website, including in articles or postings, for hyperlinks embedded in messages, or for any results obtained from use of such information. Nor will we be liable for any loss or damage, including consequential damages, if any, caused by a reader's reliance on any information provided by the podcast or website. Please do not listen to the podcast if you do not accept self-responsibility for your actions.